Roy Hodgson out of a job and England sent packing in disgrace again from a big football tournament. The Times newspaper today has given every single England player a zero rating and some of you suggested on my Twitter timeline that that's too generous. England lost in the uh, knockout round, the last 16 stage of the European Championships. 2-1 to Iceland who were, well let's be honest, absolutely magnificent. Here's how the night unfolded. Sturridge through to Sterling. What a ball! Sterling is he brought down by Haldorson? Referee say and really scores. That is exactly what's going to happen. And it's helped across goal and Iceland are level. You mean this by your pay your pay your golpe? Golpe! embarrassment is Iceland's ecstasy. You know, the result can't lie. Uh, you know, we had 95 minutes to, to put right. Uh, I'm going to have to take some responsibility. Myself, personally, I'm going to have to take some responsibility. I should be saving uh, at least two goals that have, that have happened in this tournament. So, But we're all gutted. We felt we let a chance slip tonight. Um, we believe we could win the game, and, and we haven't. My contract was always up after the Euros. So now is the time for someone else to oversee the progress of this young, hungry, extremely talented group of players. Where do we start with England and this debacle? Well, that was the worst performance I've ever seen from an England team, ever, um, from start to finish from the game. We were out fought, we were out thought, um, we were out battled, and we were totally hopeless for 90 minutes. It was to announce some England fans and some Iceland fans. We've got Billy Grant, Mark Napper, and Jimmy McGagan and Iceland fans Magnus Mar Einarsson and Bjarni Bearings. Uh, welcome all of you. Uh, congratulations to our Iceland fans. I am going to start with the England fans, if you don't mind, Magnus and Bjarni. Uh, Billy, you, you, you've seen some pretty disappointing England performances over the years. How bad was this? Yeah, this was... Um, afterwards, the bar afterwards, we discussed it. We said, is that the worst? Is that the biggest low? And I have to admit, that is pretty low. I mean, South Africa was quite bad when we lost 4 to Germany in uh, Bloemfontein. That was, that was pretty bad. We, we've gone out on penalty shootouts where we've actually put a lot of fight in there, you know, and we didn't sort of kind of, you know, with this game, we didn't rest on our laurels. We actually said, look, Iceland, they're a decent side. And the fans went there thinking, you know, we're going to have to go there and do the business. But the fact is that the team went out there and they did not even try. But the most embarrassing thing about it is that Iceland is just the size of Brighton, right? Could you imagine just taking the town of Brighton and, and carving it off and saying to everyone, put yourself in that football team? That's how bad it was, like, you know, for okay. us. And also, their defender, their central defender, plays for Charlton. They got relegated to Division 1. We couldn't even get past a central defender playing in the same team as my team, Brentford, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it was so bad. It really okay, let's mark. Let me ask you, Mark, um, how can players that have had an amazing Premier League season, Kane, Vardy, Deli Alley, I don't need to name them all, be so much more ordinary for the national side? Please explain that to me. Some of them look tired, I think. I thought Kane in particular looked really tired. Um, and, and also, that kind of explain inspiration. Uh, they didn't seem to be inspired. There's no creativity. I mean, it's a bit like the Slovakia game. Uh, but it just didn't seem to be enough thought and ways moving forward. It was just, it just really sat out to watch. And you know, I agree with the, the last one. Like the South Africa game against Algeria, sorry, the, the game of South Africa against Algeria, I think, was probably equally as bad. But that was trash. Yeah. Last night. Embarrassing to watch. 
Jimmy, what words would you describe, uh, would you use to describe England's performance? I can hardly hear you. I'm so sorry. I, I did get the word frustrating. So while we just sort that out, I'm going to hear from Marcus and Biani. Marcus, congratulations. You were absolutely magnificent. Thank you very much. Oh. I, I think you should give, give us a, a credit because obviously it's a disappointment for England, but it's the greatest night in Iceland sports history. How did you do it? Uh, the team spirit, work, ratio, and ratio, and, uh, and just uh, togetherness in the squad is better than none, and, and I think yeah. that was a key behind this victory. Bjarni, um, that, I think, in this tournament, Bjarni, was um, Iceland's easiest game. Is that fair enough? Bjarni, are you still with us? Bjarni, I can see you in your blue top somewhere. Oh, we're just trying to get your sound back. Hello, Bjarni, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can was, you hear me? Yeah, was that Iceland's easiest game in this tournament? No, I, I wouldn't say that because the game was quite tough and England played quite well. Right. I wouldn't say they were embarrassed. They, they did their best. We were simply better. <clears throat> we don't have any stars in our team, no big stars. We simply have uh, 11 or even we have a group of 23 great football players. We played as a team and we made it. And... Uh, I think uh, the England team was under a huge pressure, both from the UK media and from the public, while the Icelandic team only had supporters. And it was amazing to be at this uh, stadium with uh, 36,000 people. Only 3,000 people were there. Still, uh, you could only hear Icelandic voices there. Yes. The England fans were uh, using their investment in their seats quite well, sitting on the time, watching the game, while the Icelandic fans, they were just... Uh, having fun, enjoying the game and, and, and supporting their team. But England England did know about the long throw of your captain, Aaron Gunnison, but still couldn't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> don't laugh, it's I really painful. I understand how he can do this. I, I guess he is uh, a Viking like the rest of us, uh, so we're used to throw big stones and axes uh, over the fields, and that uh, definitely is one of his strengths, yes. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I, I, was, I was going to ask you and, and Bjarne if, if, you, if you would recreate that, that uh, Iceland roar. I think we've actually lost Magnus now, but you know that the fantastic celebration that we have been seeing, Bjarne, where does that come from? Uh, oh, blimey, we're losing all of them. Well, maybe I should ask the England fans, Billy, Mark and Jimmy, to do <laughs> the Iceland celebrations. The slow clap and then that roar. How would you describe it, Billy? What's it, what's it like when you're in the stadium hearing that? Is that me? Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it sounds quite enough. But like I said to you, we actually thought the, the Finnish fans were brilliant. That celebration and everything like that. At the end, a lot of England fans stayed behind and they clapped the Finnish fans because they just thought the team was... Sorry, the Finnish fans, the Icelandic yeah. fans. Um, yeah, because the, the, the team was fantastic, the fans were fantastic, and also they showed the passion. And we talked about this as well because we think that there's a, just, just talking in the broader sense, there's a, there's the, 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 part of the reason why we lost, I mean, they talked about tiredness and all that. That's nonsense. Unfortunately, there's an arrogance that runs through England. I've been going to 12, I've been to 12 tournaments, so listen, I follow the team through thick and thin. But let's not, let us say it as it is. There's an arrogance that runs through the team. Because they think we are England, we can turn up, we'll do what we want. It doesn't matter what we do, I, we will win. You know what, Billy? I, just, I, I don't think somebody like Eric Dyer comes across as arrogant in any way at all. I, I, think it's, I still think there's an attitude within there. And also, like the manager. The manager. And Roy Hodgson, you might come across as nice guy, but there was an arrogance in the way that he chose the team. Yeah, that wasn't quite working. But, yeah. You know, so what's happened is that you get somebody like Iceland, who what they do is that, what they do is they, they give. They look at it and they say, listen, we know that we can try if we pull together. So what we'll do is that we'll pull together with our Division 1 players and everybody else and we'll play some really good football. Okay, I've got, to, I've got to pause. I just want to ask quick from Jimmy and Mark and Billy, who do you want to succeed Roy Hodgson? Give me one name. Uh, it's difficult, difficult, difficult to talk about last night. I, I, I don't know. No, no one inspires me, to be honest with you at the moment. No one. Okay. You know, Tottenham manager, Tottenham manager, bring him in, you know, take him off a load of money, he knows how to deal with players, maybe. Okay, uh, thank you very much.
all of you, and congratulations again to Magnus and Vi. Someone did suggest Eddie Jones. Does he do football? In the next hour, more reaction to England getting knocked out of the Euros. And we'll look at the, we'll seriously look at the contenders to be the next manager. Some people have mentioned Arsene Wenger. Lots of people mentioned Gareth Southgate. Before that, let's begin the weather. Here's John.